NATO states may send non-combat troops to Ukraine for stopping Russian invasion, proposals are made. Today, many fear that if Russian President Vladimir Putin wins his war of aggression against Ukraine, countries like Poland and the Baltic states will be his next targets. This was stated by experts of the Kyiv independent media outlet. It is noted that some even suggest that instead of waiting for Russian forces to reach their borders, these countries should preemptively send troops to Ukraine to force Russia to withdraw from all Ukrainian territory and keep Putin at bay. According to the publication, while such sentiments are not yet common in the West, some Western leaders are increasingly aware of the need for swift action. As French President Emmanuel Macron said in a May 2024 speech in Dresden, Russia will be here tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. The implication was that it is easier to fight Russian forces on Ukrainian soil with Ukraine's army bearing the brunt of the fighting than it would be to confront Putin's military on NATO territory. It is noted that, however, given that Ukraine will not be invited to join the alliance as long as the war continues, NATO countries should deploy troops on the ground in Ukraine. This would help prevent the loss of additional Ukrainian territory while Ukraine's military continues to fight to recapture the territories occupied by Russia. Kyiv Independent says that NATO countries should not deploy combat troops, but rather personnel whose roles would include training, which is currently conducted abroad in costly and logistically complicated ways, as well as clearing minefields and maintaining equipment, thus freeing up Ukrainian troops for actual combat. This approach has already been suggested by some of Ukraine's allies, such as France, while other countries may discreetly provide similar support. Lastly, if Russian forces attack foreign troops in Ukraine, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov already said that military instructors are a legitimate target for Russia, they should expect immediate reprisal. Affected countries should allow weapons that they delivered to Ukraine to intercept incoming missiles and aircraft both in Ukraine and within Russian territory and target Russia's weapons production facilities even deep inside the country. Ukrainian soldiers welcome U.S. President's decision on HIMARS. It is fair to hit bases inside Russia. If Russians are using their weapons in Ukraine, then it should be fair for Kyiv forces to strike Russian territory. It doesn't mean Ukrainian troops are going to use the weapons against civilian targets, just military targets, Ukrainian soldiers who fight in Vovchansk told The Telegraph. In conversations with the newspaper, Ukrainian defenders were unanimous that Joe Biden had now made the right decision, albeit belatedly, to give Ukraine permission to use US-supplied HIMARS to strike inside Russia. They said that Ukrainian commanders knew where key Russian targets across the border were located but had been unable to strike them due to limits on the strikes. Ukrainian soldiers predicted that hitting logistics, air bases, artillery and bases would badly prevent Russians from advancing deeper into Kharkiv Oblast. Since the ban on HIMARS use was eased, Ukraine launched attacks on Belgorod City, used by the invaders as a military base for strikes on Ukrainian objects and civilians. Despite the influx of Western ammunition beginning to reach Ukrainian lines after a lengthy political holdup to US supplies, Ukraine's forces are still heavily outgunned. If we use 10 shells, they send 50 back, said one artillery gunner. He predicted that allowing strikes inside Russia would be beneficial, though he noted that cross-border strikes would likely constitute a small portion of Ukraine's overall targeting. We need to kill Russians so they don't come here. One of the soldiers claimed, Ukrainian troops still face the threat of Russian artillery superiority and glide bombs which can be launched by Russian jets from beyond the range of Ukraine's air defences. A growing number of European countries, including Britain and France, had already given Kyiv permission to use Western missiles against Russian military targets before they had crossed the border. Jens Stoltenberg, the head of NATO, also put rare diplomatic pressure on the White House, declaring that, in light of how this war has evolved, the time has come to consider some of these restrictions to enable the Ukrainians to really defend themselves. Drone operators of the 73rd Brigade of the Naval Center under the Ukrainian Special Operations Forces have intercepted a Russian army base in a forest area in the occupied part of southern Kherson region. Information about the area with armored combat vehicles, dugouts, ground structures, and fortifications was transferred to the Rocket Artillery Division of the Special Operations Forces. 
As a result of continuous fire launched by the U.S. provided HIMARS rocket-propelled grenade system, military equipment and military trucks, armored personnel carriers and other structures in the area were destroyed by explosions. Most of the Russian soldiers in the position were killed, and the survivors fled the area. Located on the right bank of Dnipro River, Karen has become Russia's target since the start of full-fledged invasion of Ukraine. Thank you.